In this lecture, we'll talk about some things that corporations acting as independent entities can do. Um, it's an area called corporate development, how they invest and grow and different types of transactions that relate to the corporations themselves, corporate development. One thing that sometimes you hear about is hostile takeovers. Um, this is, they occur when an individual or company attempts to take over a corporation it attempts to buy a majority of the shares in a company for the purpose of going in taking over ownership and then restructuring the management team or the board of directors or both these are different than mergers and acquisitions because there's no mutual agreement for the transfer of the company or ownership many times companies are vulnerable to a hostile takeover hostile means the board and the directors the board doesn't vote to uh, to, to be purchased, but rather the shareholders directly decide they want to sell their shares all in total or most of them uh, to one particular entity that is buying them. So you're taking out the board of directors. Um, sometimes these are fought off by a board of directors which, with something that's called a poison pill, which works to dilute the value of the company's stock by making it less attractive for an individual or a company to purchase the company purchase the shares of the company. The poison, kill, the poison pill, which might be a payment of some kind uh, to increase the cost of a takeover, can also serve to decrease the stock value of the takeover company if they follow through with the takeover. So, so they put in place something where the organization loses if it's taken over and therefore no one wants to take it over because it has this poison pill like the suicide pill in the of the old spy movies so that's the notion of the um, hostile takeover you also have situations of joint ventures where firms come together and form an entity that's separate that is uh, run or held, owned by multiple entities usually two uh, something like that to, to start a new business or enter a new area um, these are other ways this is another type of ownership but it's also a way to develop a, uh, for a, a corporate entity to expand beyond its current reach um, s corporations like limited liability companies are a way to reduce tax liability because the S is a selection or an election made in the Internal Revenue Tax Code that allows the corporation not to be taxed as an individual entity, but rather for there to be a flow through of the value of the company or of the profits of the company um, to the owners. There are other forms of ownership that aren't really classified into the, the broader um, of the three main categories that was, were mentioned earlier. We also have a category of employee-owned businesses. These uh, are companies that have proven to be successful on many fronts, whether the company is large or small. Employees who have ownership tend to have a higher sense of loyalty to the company. They understand the profits of the company and the, and the fact that their activities are driven by profits because there's mutual interest between the ownership and the worker. Um, there's also two types of employee ownership structure. One is called the equity benefit plan. The other is the employee controlled company. The equity benefit plan offers the employee a stake in the company without really having voting rights. So they get value from their work, but they don't really have decision making. Uh, they can influence the decision making directly. Whereas the employee controlled structure may have less equity benefits, but all of these are considered owners and may have varying degrees of voting rights. So different, uh, different uh, value, different amounts of shares might have different voting rights or different types of shares. Control and corporate income is shared and divided up among the employee owners in this context. So these are some other more, uh, more unique uh, types of structures that are often uh, identified and put in place as well. Back towards the, uh, the corporate development activity, there are mergers that occur between organizations of any of these various types. A merger occurs when businesses combine their assets 
and the, there's a, the surviving entity could be either one of the two, but generally there's a combination of uh, usually corporations, um, and they end up forming some new business, some, some new uh, entity. Uh, one could be the surviving entity or the other, generally depends upon what's how, what has the best tax position or assets position or brand value. Business growth and improved profitability through the expansion in this way are important considerations. New product development, new markets, expanding operations, these are all ways to grow a business. But they also grow by merging with other companies, taking other entities as part of, the, of a larger surviving organization. A merger then is the combination of two companies to form a new company. When firms make or sell similar products, they're called a horizontal merger, meaning two people that used to compete in the similar markets merge together to, uh, and, and they now have combined market share as one entity. Uh, when Martin Marietta and Lockheed merged, they became Lockheed Martin, for example. That's a classic case of a horizontal merger. When companies operating at different levels in the value chain merge, it's called a vertical merger. If Burger King, for example, were to purchase a large Idaho potato farm, that would be a vertical merger because the, uh, the retail outlet with contact to the customers would, would take control of some one of its suppliers so it could reduce the risk of having a loss of supply or potentially pricing risk if the potato uh, crops were in some parts of the country became more scarce and prices went higher, they would essentially have control of the potatoes they need. A conglomerate merger results when firms in unrelated businesses come together and form a diversified corporation. The purchase of Sterling Drug, a pharmaceutical firm by Eastman Kodak, Kodak is an example of a conglomerate merger. Another example is uh, of, of a business growing by acquisition is Google. In 2013, Google paid $3.2 billion for smart home company Nest Labs. Nest Labs, the company was just one of the many acquisitions that Google made during that year. While these acquisitions have the potential to diversify Google's service offerings as the benefits it allows their shareholders to benefit financially, potentially. Some believe that Google might be investing in companies it, of which it has very little knowledge, in which cases, in which case it's possible that the acquisitions can end up harming an, the acquiring company. Uh, lots of research has looked at acquisitions and many acquisitions, it turns out, end up harming the value of the company after the acquisition is, is completed and integrated after a few years. There are many examples of this. However, they can also be very effective at allowing an organization or allowing a company to consolidate its position within its markets or to enter new markets, which it would otherwise have to build internally. In the next um, Venture. In the next lecture, we'll talk a little bit about what's called active investment, uh, private capital, where investors come in and instead of being a passive public investor, they become active, taking over the company and actively making changes to management and the structure of management as investors, not like a merger with another company, but individuals or private entities that buy companies in order to improve their operations to make money by making them more profitable or some other other way of turning their purchase into increased value. We'll talk about that in the next lecture.